Yo, what is up, everybody? It is I Rage Kids 20 today. We have some more Mr. Ball. Sorry, I spaced out there for a second. <laughs> what was that? Uh, we have some more Mr. Ball videos for you here today. It is a forest so evil it's illegal to enter. Now, I have a story with this. I'm going to try and make it as fast as I possibly can. Um, so, with this this story specifically um i originally thought you know looking at the picture and whatnot with the weird creature thing in this dark forest and whatnot i originally thought that it was the suicide forest in japan because it is illegal to enter there it's the only forest i know that's illegal to enter i'm sure there's other ones uh but from videos and whatnot that have been done of the area like people who've gone there and have come out said that they feel this like evil presence that just like just fills permeates the air and whatnot so that's why i thought it was but then like either for the bell witch haunting or his entire village drop dead overnight um video mr b made a post saying that like you know people seem to like the the, the video about the forest and some place that sound i from what i remember it was like some place in uh the u.s so i was like oh well, first off, spoiler, I haven't watched that one yet. <laughs> and second off, I thought it was the Japan Forest. So now I'm disappointed. <laughs> so I'm excited to find out what forest in the U.S. is so evil and why it's considered to be so evil. Did a lot of people die there? Did a lot of people get like murders and, and crimes and stuff happen there? Or is it something else? But why is the place considered so evil that it's illegal to enter? I want to find out. So, Mr. B, that's where you come in. Do your awesome, amazing storytelling and take me away. I have to start today's video with a disclaimer. Don't go to Dudleytown, Connecticut. This that's is not right, a prank. Dudley. It's not a stunt. It's not clickbait. It's the truth. I'm confident that at the end of this video, there are going to be people that want to go. Don't do it. I kind of want... I haven't got to the end of the video. And I'm kind of like... I don't want to go. <laughs> but I'm sure by the end of the video, be like, you know what? I never mind. One, it's illegal to right. go to Dudley Town. It's private property. Right. And two, as you'll see in today's video, there is a reason why people abandoned Dudley Town. It is not a safe place for people. But before we get into the story about Dudley Town, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, the next time the like button is playing an intense game of online FIFA, wait until they get the lead and then unplug their Wi-Fi. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on Evil. all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. I did want to make a joke and be like, that is pure evil, Mr. B, but who's playing soccer? <laughs> like, who's going to play soccer? Boring. Or sorry, football. Boring. Just kidding, just kidding. Kind of, but just kidding. Ghost Town. I'm very excited. It was a bright summer day in 1906, and Dr. William C. Clark and his wife Harriet were driving slowly through a beautiful part of northwestern Connecticut called Litchfield County. Litchfield is a rural, very hilly area with lots of winding country roads, and the Clarks were there to try to scout out an area to build their second home. The couple lived full-time in New York City, where Dr. Clark was an oncologist, which is a cancer doctor, and he was also a professor at the Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons. And while the Clarks' lives were very exciting and fulfilling in the city, they were also very hectic and chaotic, and so the reason they had settled on Litchfield as the place to look for a location for their second home is because it was the total opposite of the city. It was quiet, it was peaceful, it was perfect. 
And so as this couple from New York City drove along these winding backcountry roads, they eventually reached this beautiful covered wooden bridge. And after they drove across it, they got this view up onto this mountainside off to their right. And high up on this mountain was this huge shaded beautiful forest. And they saw there was a road that appeared to kind of spider off and go into these woods. Now the couple had no idea what was up there, but it was just so beautiful and they were immediately so drawn to it that they decided they would go check it out and see if maybe there was a spot for their second home in these woods. And so Dr. Clark took the car and he went up this access road and very quickly as they began climbing up this hillside, the road became very bumpy and overgrown. It was pretty obvious that not many cars were driving into these woods. And so before they even reached the tree line, Dr. Clark had to pull the car over and park it on the side of the road. And then he and Harriet got out and then on foot, they continued up towards the forest. And once the couple actually entered the forest, immediately the sunlight faded because the canopy over their heads was so thick and the air became cool and refreshing. And after walking for only a couple of minutes, the forest, which at first seemed very still and quiet, suddenly became alive. They could hear birds chirping and animals running around and insects buzzing. And then up ahead, they saw there was this field off to the side of the road that was full of all these wild apple trees growing in all different directions. And as they got closer, they saw there was just a deer right in the middle of the apple trees eating <coughs> apples directly off the branches. And then just past all these apple trees, the couple began passing these huge, beautiful patches of roses and lilacs and bright yellow bitter tansy flowers that lined the road. And then before long, the couple was stepping over these babbling brooks and off in the distance, they could hear the sound of running water like fresh spring water coming down off the mountain. And then as the sun did begin to poke through the canopy above of them, it almost looked like the forest was sparkling, literally. This forest was sitting on a hillside, and the hillside, which was made up of rock, had mica inside of it. Uh. And mica is a kind of mineral that when sunlight hits it, it almost looks like it's shimmering. And of course, there were the owls. As Dr. Clark and his wife walked farther and farther into this beautiful forest, they heard more and more owls hooting off in the distance. And to the Clarks, this made the forest feel enchanted. It was like the owls were personally greeting them. By the time the couple had... Okay, Mr. B, you're not doing a great job at the moment of enticing me to not go into the forest. You're enticing me to go into the forest at this point. Like, uh, I mean, I'm sure we're going to get to the illegal, evil, crazy stuff here. <clears throat> but like, uh, <laughs> this place sounds like a beautiful stroll through nature. Like, I don't... Why not go into it? <laughs> like, yeah, damn, this place is pretty cool. Turned around and begun heading back to their car, they had already made up their mind that they were going to build their second home in that forest. And so after returning to their home in New York, they promptly put in the paperwork to purchase 1,000 acres inside of that Connecticut forest. <sighs> and that expensive. forest had a name. It was called Dark Entry, and it was named that because it looked like from the outside, the forest was basically dark all the time. There was shade cast on it from mountains nearby, and then also the canopy inside of Dark Entry is exceptionally thick. At one time, there actually had been a town inside of Dark Entry Forest. However, all the people who had lived in that town were now all gone. The only remnants of this town were a couple of crumbling stone walls and a couple of home foundations that were scattered about the dark entry forest floor. The Clarks had seen some of these ruins as they walked along this overgrown path through the forest, but they weren't concerned. Instead, they felt like these ruins actually added some charm to the forest. After the land purchase was finalized, Dr. Clark began looking for local builders in Connecticut who could help him build this second home inside of Dark Entry Forest. But no matter how much money he offered these local Connecticut builders, they all said no. Now, none of them gave a straight answer Reasonable. to Dr. Clark about why they were turning him down, so Dr. Clark just kind of assumed that, you know, hey, this project is not huge, it's just one house, and the forest is pretty isolated and hard to get to, and so he thought, you know, probably these builders think it's not worth the effort. But Dr. Clark was not dis- I mean, first off, to buy that, I mean, I don't know what the price would be in, like, uh, it might be a sm small, just nowhere part of Connecticut, is it? Um... 
So it might not be that expensive, but like a thousand acres, that's... I imagine that's a pretty penny. And he's also trying to throw a lot of money at these people uh, to build the house in general. But then he is a doctor, so that does make sense. He probably would have that money in spades, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Encouraged, he decided he would just build the house himself. After all, he was a very handy, competent guy who had grown up on a farm in New Jersey, and so he knew how to build things. And so, for the next several months, Dr. Clark would travel from New York City to Dark Entry Forest every weekend, and he would build this home. First, he cut down this massive swath of hemlock trees on this one flat patch of his land, and then with all this lumber he had cut down, he built his rustic two-story cabin on this flat part of his land. And then nearby on this hilltop, there was a freshwater spring at the top. And so he laid piping from the spring into his cabin so they could have fresh water. And then at the bottom of this nearby hill was this brook. And Dr. Clark loved just standing and watching this brook because inside of it were all these trout that would dart all around. And so Dr. Clark built a swimming pool with beautiful mossy embankments right up against this brook so he could sit there and watch the fish. By Thanksgiving of that year, the cabin was done, and so Dr. Clark and his wife Harriet, they stayed at the cabin to celebrate the holiday. And as they were sitting in their swimming pool, watching the trout and listening to the owls hoot off in the distance, they both agreed that this second home was like their little piece of heaven. So every summer from there on out, and every major holiday that they could manage it, the Clarks would travel to their home in Dark Entry Forest, and they would swim and hike and relax, and they'd watch the leaves on the mountainside turn from green to bright yellows and oranges and reds. It was perfect. That is, until 1918. That summer, the couple was in their second home in the forest when Dr. Clark was suddenly called back to New York to attend to a medical emergency. Harriet was very upset at the prospect of suddenly being left alone in this cabin in the middle of the forest by herself. Yeah, especially, do they? Do, I, I might have missed a few details in there. I'll go back and make sure that I didn't later. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't say something offensive there, so I had to look it up. Because, like, you know, <clears throat> uh, the term... Uh, like have something in spades and whatnot uh you know is, is a common term and whatnot but then i thought about it, i was like it's not racist right it's not like a that's not like a term that comes from like old history racism or something right i didn't just say something fucked up because <laughs> i haven't used that term in forever and from what i can find no so i think we're good uh my bad in advance of that is like Something that's like, oh yeah, no, that actually means something really bad. My bad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't hear if uh, if if they had like any kind of animals or protection. Or whatnot. I heard I heard the details about you know what he built and you know where it was and situated and what and, and, and what have you were there. I just I didn't. I, if there was a smaller detail about you know safety precautions for living out in the middle of a random forest like weapons or animals or some kind of alarm system or not i missed that so yeah i would not be too thrilled about being out uh, alone in the middle of the forest if i didn't have any form of protection either uh, <laughs> i want to be too thrilled about that for who knows how many days and so when she dropped her husband off at the nearby train platform she made him promise that he would come back soon and he said he would and then Dr. Clark got on the train, it took off, and Harriet just stood there with her arms crossed, watching it as it chugged along off into the distance. From his comfortable seat on that train, Dr. Clark had no idea that his wife was about to endure a nightmare while he was gone. Oh, good. Good. That poor thing. That does not sound like fun. We've all been there. Your guests are on their way over to your house for your... Pretty sure we have. Uh, I'm going to cut real fast. And I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any finer details. Hold on. Okay. Didn't miss anything. <clears throat> uh, I didn't really catch the irrigation system and whatnot. He made for the green water and whatnot, but I caught everything else. Uh, so, we're good here. Let's let it continue. I did not hear anything about protection, so... Like, if you're going to live in the woods, just naturally from predators and uh, animals and 
potentially creatures you don't know of that no one knows of because they've been seen or spotted in the wild um you want to bring protection so hopefully they, they got something because <laughs> this ain't gonna be a fun nightmare no nightmare is fun but uh uh the harder the nightmare because of the less protection and systems you have in place uh the less fun it's gonna be When the Clarks bought their 1,000 acres in the Dark Entry Forest, they did virtually no research on the forest or the surrounding area. If they had, Apparently. they very likely would not have purchased that land. Oh, you see, good. the town that used to be inside of the Dark Entry Forest, that was now just ruins that the Clarks saw when they first walked around inside of the forest, was abandoned for a very specific reason. It was cursed. At least that's what the locals say. And right, in fact, course, that yeah. was the reason why no builders in the area were willing to go with Dr. Clark into the forest right. to go build his house because they were too scared to go anywhere near the ruins of this cursed town. A real photo of ruins in Dark Entry Forest. Haunted rooms. I mean, it looks cool. It looks cool though, Mr. V. Why are you teasing? Why are you teasing me like this? <laughs> this town, which was known as Dudley Town, was first settled sometime in the 1740s. At right. first, it was just a couple of people and a couple of small structures, but pretty quickly, 30 families had moved in and it was a thriving little town. But as the 1700s came to a close, terrible things began to happen to residents of this town. First, there was the Carter family. They moved to Dudley Town in 1759, and shortly after arriving there, six members of their family all died suddenly from cholera. The remaining branch of sure. the Carter family was so grief-stricken from their losses that they left Dudley Town and went to New York, where they resettled. But almost immediately after getting set up there, Native Americans raided their property and massacred them, and the three people that survived this massacre were three of the kids, and they were all kidnapped and taken away in 17 <clears throat> okay so 1700s i guess that makes sense so it's like i'm thinking you whenever here in new york i'm thinking city is like why would natives come to the city and bust into your place and <laughs> but like no 1700s got it um <clears throat> okay so the problem is is the, the theory is that just not from not just being in the place like you're gonna experience bad stuff curse and whatnot you get cursed by in theory again uh, locals believe you get cursed for just being there and that curse will follow you anywhere once it's attached to you you're done in rings okay got it a l little bit less eager to go check it out i mean i'm very superstitious but just in case. In 92, a Dudley resident named Hollister died suddenly. Now, we don't know if he fell off a roof or if he was murdered. No one really knows. Okay. But what we can agree on is that his untimely death happened in the home of a man named Tanner. And Tanner, following Hollister's death, suddenly just began obsessively talking about these strange creatures he was seeing out in the woods at night, kind of roaming around the dark entry forest. And he talked about it all the time and nobody listened to him. And eventually Tanner went insane and his daughter had to care for him for the rest of his life. And while Tanner was slowly losing his mind, his next door neighbor named Abel also began reporting that he was seeing weird creatures roaming around the tree line all around <laughs> which one died i because i want to make a joke no i think abel died yeah i think cain murdered abel um uh, <sighs> i was gonna say he saw, saw the dead spirit of cain walking around but not i think it's the, it would be the opposite <laughs> anyways bible joke let's go on the town and as abel continued to report seeing these strange creatures lurking in the shadows he too slowly went mad and had to be cared for until his death in the early 1800s a famous revolutionary war hero general herman swift who lived in dudley town lost his mind shortly after his wife was struck by lightning and then in 1813 an unknown epidemic rolled through dudley town and killed many 
many of its residents. After that, more and more residents of Dudley Town either died suddenly or died mysteriously, and also more and more residents began coming forward with stories. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I didn't mean to pause uh, for a moment at that point. I was going to pause, but not right there. But I accidentally hit the button. Um, so, like, I mean, you know, back 17, 1800s and whatnot, like, didn't have little medicine or anything. Like, could have just been a bad flu that just wiped them all out. You know, not necessarily had to be like a horrid plague of of evil swept through or anything like that, you know what I mean? Like, just any fucking virus or sickness could have killed them off easily. Um, but yeah, all the mysterious figures and stuff, I'm gonna go back, because I think he's building into that here. Uh, like, these creatures and stuff that not only one, but at least two or three plus have, have said it or seen one not. That is interesting. That's exciting. <laughs> That's really cool mysteriously and also more and more residents began coming forward with stories about having seen these strange shadowy creatures moving around the tree line at night by about 1900 all the dudley town residents had either died or simply just left abandoning their homes except for one family the brophies but in quick succession <laughs> bro not the brophies oh my god that's great sorry the Brophy family's sheep all died, then the mother died of tuberculosis, then the two sons were accused of theft in a nearby town, and then they just disappeared, leaving one person, John Brophy, the father. But the Brophy family home burned to the ground, and so John, who was overcome with grief, just wandered off into the forest and was never heard from again. At that point, Dudley Town officially became a ghost town. Deadly curse turned New England village into a ghost town. <laughs> I love this. Deadly centuries old curse wiped out the once thriving New England village of Dudley Town, Connecticut. Got it. Driving residents to suicide and madness and causing others to die mysteriously, say researchers. Okay. Madness, death, and accidents. Mysterious event, including death by lightning. <laughs> the one that gave terrifying visions of demons and mysterious illnesses. I doubt they were mysterious. Like most of those illnesses, like we not know and have cured by now. But like, yeah. Um, huh. Interesting. No one lived there. And it was at that point in 1906 when Dr. Clark and Harriet had their beautiful summer's day walk through the forest and discovered where they wanted to build their second home. So fast forward back <laughs> no to 1918 them. and Dr. Clark, he's on his medical emergency leave to New York. It winds up being very quick. He's back on a train within 36 hours and he pulls oh, into bad. the station right near Dark Entry Forest and he's expecting to see Harriet waiting on the platform for him. But when the train rolled into the station, she wasn't there. Now, Dr. Clark. In just two days. In just two days. Shit got real. Oh, wow. Was not a superstitious person, but for some reason, when he didn't see his wife there, he just felt like something was off. There's no reason she wouldn't have come out here to greet him. I mean, she was worried about being all alone in the cabin, and she knew he was going to be arriving at that moment. Right. And so, feeling a little bit panicked, Dr. Clark left the train station and, on foot, made his way over to the dark entry forest. And when he got there and began walking on that overgrown road path that led to his house, Immediately, as soon as he was within the shade of the trees, he began hearing these owls hooting very loudly off in the distance. Now, normally, the sound of these owls hooting oh, made him feel welcome, cute. but this time he felt scared. He felt like something was wrong up ahead. Right. I mean, when you already expect that something as bad has happened or something's going to go down or, or what have you, um, <clears throat> then, like, everything that might not even be a sign becomes a sign to you you start you know something that might have been friendly is now not you know like that that's all it's kind of mental stuff and whatnot but like it is kind of interesting to have this foreboding feeling it's just like man something's different about the air today you know it's, it's, a, it's a nice spice to the story 
And so he began jogging through the forest. And it's very dark, and all he can hear is the sound of these owls, and it's getting louder and louder and louder. And then finally, he reaches the clearing where his property is. And at this point, it's a cacophony of owls hooting practically right on top of him. And he looks up towards his house up on this hill, and he sees the front door is slightly open. And so now, with his heart racing... No, I don't know if I'm the camera. Okay, ain't no one going out of that cabin to, to take a picture of that cabin. <laughs> if it still exists anymore, it might have burned down to the ground or who, who knows what. And ain't no one going to that cabin. But, uh, whew, I like the tension. Wondering what's going on with his wife, Dr. Clark runs up to his front porch. He gets to the door and he flings it open the rest of the way. And then right before he stepped into his house, this sudden high-pitched noise began up on the second floor inside of his house. And it was so startling to Dr. Clark that he just froze where he was. And so suddenly it's so loud from the owls all around him and the woods behind him and whatever this noise is that he just stood there unsure what to do. And so as he's sitting there getting the courage up to go investigate his house, he realizes what this high-pitched noise is. Oh, no, it's the back. sound of maniacal, insane laughter coming from the second floor. Sensing his wife had to be in danger. That uh, wasn't the sound you played. <laughs> I would have preferred that. Oh my god. The doctor charged up the nearby steps up to the second floor and he could tell this laughter, this high-pitched laughter was coming from the master bedroom. And so he ran down the short hallway. He got in front of the closed door that led into the master bedroom. He slowly... I mean, do you guys have a TV? Maybe there's something really funny on man. You know, you don't know. He opened it up and there in the back corner of his room was his wife. She was on the ground, rolled up in a ball, facing the door. Ah. Her hands were clenched in fists. Her eyes were open and unblinking and her mouth was open wider than was humanly possible. And as he's staring at his wife, wondering what's going on, he realizes this insane high-pitched laughter is coming <laughs> from his wife. But it doesn't even look like it's coming out of her. Her chest is just heaving. Her mouth is staying open and the laughter is just coming out of her. And so the doctor just stood there watching his wife who's staring directly at his eyes and finally he just got so scared he turned and he ran yo fuck your wife you gotta save yourself <laughs> uh, you know what Clark made a decision in that moment Mr. Clark made a decision in that moment he made a game time decision he's like yeah, this don't look right. I ain't gonna... Uh, being a doctor, I ain't even gonna check if this is a medical emergency or anything. Fuck yeah, I'm out. <laughs> he just... he His fight or flight senses kicked in. He chose flight. <laughs> He's like, nope. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> man, you know what? Hey, we, we can't all... We can't all be the fighters, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't blame you. During Dr. Clark's 36 hours he was away in New York, something happened to his wife. We don't know what it was, but it caused her to lose her mind. The only thing she would talk about was the strange creatures she saw out in the forest. So someone came back. <laughs> someone came back and got her. Oh, no. By some accounts, Harriet spent the rest of her life in a mental asylum. By other accounts, she went back with Dr. Clark to New York, where she took her life. Today, Dudley Town is not. Uh, that took it. That that took a twist real fast. Okay. Not only still abandoned, but it is also illegal to visit. However, people do still sneak in. Dark energy forest. Real photo of Dudley Town. Well, not, you're, it's illegal. You got. You have your face posted, man into Dudley Town and walk around the ruins, and many of them have reported feeling these pockets of cold air where there shouldn't be cold air, and also some others have said as they've been walking, they've felt phantom hands slap them and push them. Some have said they've taken photographs inside of the Dark Entry Forest near Dudley Town, and they've captured strange, shadowy figures that they couldn't see with their naked eye. The famous... I mean, it would have been cool. I, mean, I, I gotta look up some of these pictures, but it would be cool to see one, one of these pictures. One Paranormal night. couple, Ed... The Warriors, Seekers of the Supernatural, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Isn't that from, uh... Is that the same people that's supposed to be based off of the people from, um... The, the Happening? Is it The Happening? That's not The Happening. That's not what it's called, right? The, the Conjuring. There we go. 
and uh, Annabelle and whatnot. I mean, I'm sure he's going to explain it to me. I'm just trying to guess beforehand. So, I mean, I'm sure you're thinking that if you would stop fucking pausing, you would know. I'm not. I'm just excited. I'm sorry, I got to pause. Shadowy figures that they couldn't see with their naked eye. The famous paranormal couple, Ed and Lorraine Warren, shot a special series in the 1970s inside of the Dark Entry Forest, and they declared the area around Dudleytown was demonically possessed. I'm gonna go watch that now. So that's gonna do it. If you got something out of this episode, man. So wow. Okay. I mean, so here's the here's some some of the thoughts of it. That's right here. Some thoughts circling, circling. Um. So it seems like. They just. Sorry, the screen just went black. Yeah, I know you can't see anymore, but like. Um, run out of internet? Again? <laughs> run out of internet. Did the internet go down? Hold on. And you haven't done. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, this is really distracting. Um, so, like, yeah, they just see these figures and whatnot, and then they go, they go insane. They go crazy. Like, I don't know. Like, even if I was seeing these figures out in the woods and stuff and no one believed me, I don't feel like I would lose my mind. So I imagine it has to be something like once you start seeing these figures, you start seeing them everywhere and all the time. Like, like you close your eyes and you just see them like right in front of your face and stuff. You open your eyes, they're not there kind of stuff. Like, I assume it would have to be something like, like it, those figures take control of you kind of thing to where you would absolutely just go bashing insane and whatnot. But like, who knows if these testimony stories are true or not because it seems like people go there and believe fine for what we know so maybe it's like you have to live there if you spend at least one night there you're done in rings or something you know what i mean like who knows um but uh Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it definitely sounds enticing, but it could, it could it be like you would have to look into this to find out. Could it be that like it's like one of those situations where you go to a haunted place, and people say that the the spirit attached to them and came back with them to their house, and now they're just the house is haunted and shit, and has all these paranormal activity stuff. Um, like could, could it be like that? Is the curse gonna? Get attached to you, and also you can see like shadow figures all around your house and outside your house, even though you live in a different state or something. Like, how's it work? Because I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. If it wasn't illegal, you know, it kind of sounds fun, but uh, I just don't know if I can risk uh, losing my mind. You know what I mean? I don't really, I don't really want to risk that just in case that this shit happens. But now I'm, am really interested to see if. Uh, the paranormal couple and whatever uh, have a video that they have of that something that I can uh, they can uh, look up because I'd love to watch that I, that sounds like a lot of fun and uh, I want to see if there's any of these pictures of the of these strange sightings and stuff even if they're fake and whatnot of these shadow like creatures on the outskirts and the inside of the woods and whatnot like that sounds exciting um. This one's not really a lessons you can learn kind of story. Just uh, uh, before you buy any plot of land or or like a business or anything, like do do research because it could be something as just like oh there's been like you're buying a restaurant or something like oh there's been rumors of like gas leaks in this place. So it's like oh well that's probably not a good investment for my money or whatnot. So you know it could be something like tiny like that too like. Oh yeah, you don't want to buy this place. Uh, it's fucking haunted. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, so always investigate anywhere you're going to to set up shop, whether it be where you're gonna live or or whatnot, because there could be like, oh, there was a YouTuber that lived here and this place was widely haunted, and he finally had enough to said fucking left. And of course, the people who sell it to you, they ain't gonna tell you that. <laughs> they ain't gonna tell you that shit. You know, what I mean, like that's good. That, that shit's not gonna be in the, the 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 paperwork you're signing, you know. So, it's usually just a good idea to research the places that you've, uh, you know, that, that you're gonna live and or 
open up a business at or whatnot. So that's really the only like lesson we can learn here. But like whether it happened or not, whether any of that's real or something, who knows? What I think is hilarious is that uh, who knows what happened afterwards because I'm sure a lot of this is just it's, part of this could be a little bit of added detail here and there because this is back in the 1900s so if any of the Clarks did express this information to people I'm sure it's been exaggerated and whatnot and it possibly changed slightly to make it fit into a storytelling format for Mr. B um, so there might be some details in there but like did he like start to leave and he's like no I gotta save my wife and immediately came back or did he was, was he like fuck that and left and like the next day brought the police to come help him get his wife or something like that like what happened there because that was hilarious like kind of fucked up but at the same time like that was pretty funny man that was pretty fucking funny he just comes in like owls hooting like crazy he's already on edge and then his wife is losing her fucking mind mouth all like (laughs) <laughs> and shit he's just like nah <laughs> like, it's just like you open the door you just see that it's just like <laughs> he just nope and just fucking left <laughs> and then eventually had to have come back for her <sighs> so like because if the other story is correct to where she came with him back to new york or whatnot he had to eventually come back for her and be like yo sorry about that i was scared <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny good story good story good story good story i wish we had more details to go off of this but this was well over 100 years ago so um you know there ain't, there ain't much you can do about that. Well over a hundred. Sorry. Well over several hundred years ago. <laughs> so, you know, it's just not that much information to go off of. Uh, you know, any information that we do have, who knows how much of it's true, how much of it's not, you know, you don't know. So, uh, so if it was more recent, man, like, ooh, we would probably have some deets up in here. But uh, with the details we had, that is a very fascinating story. And of course, because a, a lot of people are going to go and inspect this place, so that's why he had to mention it. Because it's just like, it's like cursed. I don't believe it. Let's go there and see what really happens. Do we actually see any stuff and whatnot? And that could be famous last words. <laughs> you know, kind of situation. All right, people get a job. It's just like, it's a bunch of hocus pocus, story, lore, legend stuff. Man, it's not real. You never know. So you want to go find out for yourself. And <laughs> that could be but actually, now it's illegal because it is uh, its own property. I'm sure someone owns it so that no one can, else can own it and try to repeat previous history and try to build uh, villages or settlements or whatever there. Um, so I'm sure that's why it's owned. And they're like, don't fucking go in here, guys. You don't want to. So that's very interesting. Anyways, thank you for joining me here today. Great story, Mr. B, as always, per usual. And I will see you all next time.